Hi, this is Chris Morrow, and this is Comic Con at Home. The panel is restoried, reimagining creative privilege. And, you know, history is a story told by the victors until it's not. The story landscape is changing, and it's really changing right now. I'm Tawny Shaleski. I'm currently Comic Conning at Home from Hillsborough, Oregon. And um, I'm a producer for this team. Uh, we're working on a project called Alt, which is an alternative reality game that allows you to explore. Uh, alternative narratives and sort of reimagine what history would be like if it uh, just looked very different. Um, and I want to send it down to our design team, to Tom from our design team. Hey, um, I'm Tom. I uh, run a company called Reality Check Productions in London with my business partner Pip, who can't unfortunately be on the call. Um, yeah, we're a kind of, we work with immersive tech, virtual, augmented reality, kind of any kind of emerging technology and we come at it from a, an angle with a, a kind of a very theatrical background. So we are regularly working kind of with theatre companies and looking at kind of narrative applications for virtual reality, augmented reality and stuff like that. So and we uh, started developing this project, Alt, with Tawny well, yeah, a couple of years back and really excited about the process we've been on with it. So yeah, now we're based in London as well. I'm not sure if I said. Hi, uh, I'm Juliet Levy. I'm a professor of history at the University of California, uh, Riverside. So I am the resident uh, historian uh, of the project. And I've been working with Tony and the rest of the team, but we started with Tony working on VR for education and sort of critical thinking about historical um, production and uh, using VR not just to recreate the past, but really to sort of rethink how we construct it. Uh, and I'm Teresa Tannenbaum, a Tess. I am a professor at UC Irvine, where I'm the director of the Transformative Play Lab in the Department of Informatics. My work exists at the intersection of interactive storytelling, participatory theater, uh, digital game studies, and augmented, mixed, and virtual reality. Uh, I've also done a lot of work with both alter alternate pasts for technology and possible futures for technology. So I've done a lot of work and practice of steampunk and looking at how people imagined possible alternate pasts and also thinking about the role that science fiction plays in the religion and how we create technologies in the present. Well, welcome. I'm hoping that you can recap the panel for me. Uh, we can give you that a shot. The, <laughs> um, so um, one of the things that um, we, one of the, one of the, one of the provocations in the panel was this notion of who, what stories are getting told and who gets to tell them, right? So we, we, we sort of started with this beginning that the, the, the sort of, especially the Hollywood world that we know sort of tends to arc to this notion that a universal story is a story about a white cis male. Um, and we all can follow that journey with the expectation that we're all gonna see ourselves in it. And one of the interesting things and the really cool things that we're seeing is more and more people being represented um, as the, heroes of those universal stories. Yeah, I had, so like, I've been wanting to work with Tawny since 2012, I think. Um, and we've, we've been dancing around ideas for a while. And I do this work with, with alternate pasts and I encountered a concept uh, known as restoring, which was introduced to me by Mia Shaw at Penn State University. And it comes from critical race studies, actually. It's about practices that marginalized voices can use to rewrite history in a way that centers their perspective, that centers their point of view, that returns agency to people who've been stripped of power and agency by, by systems of oppression. And in doing so, in reclaiming the past and retelling the story of the past, it, it allows people who have been pushed to the sides to recenter themselves in the present, to give themselves a basis for, for claiming power, for claiming futures that are being denied to them. And so it's a way of using storytelling and narrative to hopefully produce justice and an increased equity um, across uh, diverse populations, diverse groups. Uh, and when we started talking about alt, we wanted to find a way to draw on this idea and bring it into a narrative experience that we could then distribute broadly across a, a diverse set of, of users. And we thought about alternate realities and alternate timelines. I think I want to kick it over to Tom to talk a little bit about the, the design of Alt. Yeah, I think 
when thinking about the kind of the old and kind of restoring, I, I, one thing I've always been kind of really interested in is kind of the idea of we're all being responsible for our shared story, every single pe member of society. And within alt, it's this idea that by giving artists a specific kind of design focus, the idea of creating an artifact from an alternative past, they can use that design focus to imagine what an entire civilization could look like by the artifacts that it left behind. And then also kind of building upon that idea and thinking critically about the artifacts and the items within our world that we associate stories to, that we put stories upon by the people who have been in power for the last hundreds, two thousands of years, whether it be religious, political, uh, educational um, artifacts. And we associate those stories to those artifacts and we therefore associate the power that those artifacts hold over us within society. And by giving people the tools and the opportunity to explore alternative artifacts and alternative civilization through these artifacts, we can just say, we can just make people realize and maybe think that those stories are arbitrary. Those stories are made up by us and they are, con and, and they're used to control us and kind of to, to uh, give power to the people who have always had power. And I think that's kind of one of the main design ideas we've always had around alt. And one of the things that, that we're playing with really is, is, and as, is the sort of assumed authority of that voice that, that, that is, that has been privileged all, all along. Right. And in fact, there is no authority. It's just been, you know, sort of the powerful people decided that this was the version we were going to tell the story. And by really cracking that up by, by, by allowing other people to tell their stories and other people to imagine a past that could have been possible if only the story had been written by more people, had been more inclusive and more real, we're at the same time suggesting that maybe what we think of as real is not. It's just the version that we've been essentially told to believe. Um, and, you know, in many ways, you know, we, we've been working on this and thinking about this for years and we've find ourselves having this this panel, this talk at, you know, at a time when, when once again, statues are being torn down and the conversations are about, well, what will happen to history if we don't have these emblems of it? And it turns out that we don't need emblems and, and taking down figures and creating new ones and allowing others to take room, right? This is sort of really tearing apart this dichotomy between what is real and what is not is, uh, is probably the right place to start imagining a better future. Yeah, who yes. gets, no, go ahead. Oh, go, go, please. Who gets to decide what goes into the history books? Who gets to decide which perspective is the one that our children are going to read about? Whoever makes those decisions, they produce power for themselves. I think we're all gonna sort of use the P word a lot <laughs> Um, because one of the things we're really interested in is, is how power is distributed and the role that the narrative plays in the kinds of power that we create uh, for ourselves and our institutions and our society. Because ultimately, power is a shared illusion. We, we create power because we have a story about somebody having power. Yeah. Um, a lot of it, I would say, is, is a trust issue, too. You know, who are, who's the influencer that's telling this story? And, you know, how are they influenced to tell their story? I mean, they might truly believe that their story is true and factual, but it may not be. Right, we have to, I think that we're definitely seeing and we're seeing, you know, we see it in our env environment, uh, in our build as well as the broader actual human environment, um, which is that we have to sort of reconstruct those notions and really interrogate the why we trust something. Um, and it's from a technology piece, that's one of the cool things that I really like about augmented reality is we can place these artifacts of these alternative histories in places that are contextual. So if we want people to be thinking about how law enforcement works, we can place artifacts of, you know, law enforcement in places that are relevant to things in our world and just begin to provoke a conversation. This is why do I assume that's true? Who's telling it to me? Um, so yeah, so we can individually think more critically about where we're getting our information and how we value it. I think with the augmented reality elements about that, what's so powerful about augmented reality is kind of, again, it's the idea of, kind of comes with what you're saying, Juliette, about kind of the, the statues that are being torn down. It's about kind of reclaiming physical spaces. 
and reclaiming physical spaces that are used, particularly in major cities. You know, I'm in London and you think of Trafalgar Square, you think of uh, Westminster. These are very authoritarian places with a lot of symbols all, all over the shop that, um, that we associate our stories to, whether it be Napoleon on the top of the Trafalgar Square or the lions around it. Um, if we can use those spaces as a canvas, almost, for others to place their story on, then you kind of combine that physical canvas with the created narrative from an artifact and then allow the audience's imagination to take hold. And you've got something really quite powerful potentially for people to create their own versions of history, which I think is really cool. I think the other thing to, to think about is, is when we open up conversations to a more diverse set of perspectives, I, I want us to be sort of cognizant of the role that vulnerability and privilege play in here. That, and this is something that's, that's really clear to me because I'm a transgender woman. And so I, I lived for many years experiencing the privilege that comes with being perceived as a cisgender man. And when writing within that protection, writing from that perspective, I could say things without a fear of repercussion. I could say things without a fear of harassment or assault or threats those same things are no longer things that I can say without taking on certain risks. There is vulnerability that comes when you are a marginalized person from telling your story. And that's something that, that I wanna be cognizant of when we think about which voices are elevated on our platforms, when we think about the way in which we're attempting to build social norms around these bigger conversations that are possible now that we're online. Uh, and thinking about how we give power back to stories that they haven't necessarily had access to that power and that platform in the past. Well, very interesting. It occurs to me we never actually described alt sort of in a way that <laughs> I, I worry that this doesn't make sense if you don't know the thing that we're making. And, and so <laughs> very simply, alt is a location-based augmented reality interactive storytelling project intended to evoke alternate histories of alternate power systems. And the way it works is you have a smartphone app and it has a map. And as you douse through the map, you uncover hotspots where there are breaches to alternate realities and you collect artifacts that represent the material record of another civilization. Um, and we're thinking about this as a way of producing alternate material records for, for restoried pasts, essentially. Yeah, and I think one of the Little, just a little that bit to add to that all those artifacts that are being created and then populating the alt game the alt world are being created by a range of artists a range of digital artists using all sorts of tools um and we're really keen to ex work with kind of artists who aren't digitally native as well and kind of use things like virtual reality so things like tilt brush sketchfab all these kind of tools and put the, the creative power back into the hands of people who may not have, have otherwise been uh able to kind of create content now I appreciate there's there's a a barrier to entry for virtual reality and that's something we're exploring and kind of doing research into as well how we can kind of try to limit those barriers to entry and also open up the opportunities beyond virtual reality 3d creation tools as well so that's quite an exciting part of it well thank you for your time I'm Chris Morrow remotely connecting from home this year and we miss you and we'll be back soon thanks for having us thank Chris. you for having us bye Take care. Bye.